You know, I need something to cheer me up the better. What I'd like to do is to call up now a very special guest artist we have with us today, the noble author, the greatest British writer of our times, Mr. Charles Dickens. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles Dickens. Mr. Dickens, I was, I was hoping that you would regain us all here with one of your very fine tales, perhaps a, a Christmas carol. A full measure, a full hour and a half presentation of Christmas carol uh, right now? No, I, I, I read it, I read it. I, I know how it comes down. The old guy who stays up all night, sees a bunch of ghosts, and you can give a little surprise for the rest of the audience, shall we? Uh, Alright, well, well, perhaps something new. Something new. Something new, Mr. Charles Dickens with something new in the way of Christmas Carol. <coughs> well, it's uh, only customary for me to write one Christmas story a year, so a Christmas Carol. But I know, actually, there is something I could bring forward for you. I, I was going to save this in town next year, but across my desk, just a few short weeks ago, I received a letter, an anonymous uh, message that uh, contained with it the words to a song, a Christmas song. Um, the author wished for me to uh, bring it forth to the public, and well, unfortunately, I, I'm a writer, not a musician so much, and, uh, well, I thought words, and I thought and I thought, and I tried to compose a tune for it, but I'm afraid that I was unsuccessful, so instead of composing a new tune for these words, I'd rather have taken an old Christmas tune and forced these words within it. So, for you tonight, I would like to give you, for the first time ever, as far as I know, this new Christmas tune. Without any further ado, Maestro, would you?
hope you will understand that in the I'm going to interrupt the proceedings at this point and ask Mr. Wiles to step up here on the platform with me. And uh, as he has a rich family history of Yuletide traditions, particularly in the range of Yuletide cooking, and uh, being a rat catcher, he has a great bunch of uh, fresh meat available always. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to present to you the wonderful Yuletide recipe, Cooking with Wiles. What compared to Molly, Wales is my net family name. I don't like seafood. Now, well, what I would like to do, I would like to formally introduce myself once again to you. I have Emerson Wales VR, Rat and Mole Destroyer to Her Majesty. And by special appointment of the Queen, I am permitted to wear this beautiful purple uh, tie, which uh, signifies me as a royal appointment to the uh, Queen herself. Now, unfortunately, uh, I would like to, I do a bit of weasel popping too, but that, there's no mulberry bush yet. Now, because the, uh, I would like, let alone monkeys. Now, I would, uh, there's, I'm unfortunately, I am unable to prepare the holiday feast for which I have planned, because Matthew, once again, neglected to buy the coal for the stove. So instead of actually cooking a dish, I shall regale a tale to you about uh, our favorite, my family, from my family, the Wales family kitchen, to yours. I shall tell you the tale of rat pellet pie. Uh, but before I do, I do wish to share with you a very exciting discovery. We in the Wales family have been rat catchers for generations, and we, through scientific research and breeding technology, have come up with a very special holiday rat which I think you'll be most thrilled about, especially the ladies. And that will be this, the oven stuffer rat. Now, this rat has 40% more white meat than your average rat, a real boon. And more than that, for you ladies, a real time saver, it's self-basted. Can you believe it? And now, the other thing, isn't that wonderful? And now, now the nice thing too is for you health conscious friends, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good source of dietary fiber if you don't peel it. Now, that's enough with the rats. I'll get right to the story. Now, this rat pellet pie, as featured at Maxwell's in Gatlinburg, thank you, Maxwell. Uh, we, rat pellet pie, see, my father commissioned himself to the Queen to be the cook on one of the Queen's holiday feast hunts. Now, the Queen's point man takes the group of hunters out and they go hunting for the holiday feast. They bring back foul meat and stuff, foul meat, I think, and they're going to have a holiday feast. Well, my father thought, cook, oh, that ought to be easy. Little did he know, eh, girl? Well, he discovered to his dismay that being cook was not an easy job. He discovered that not only must you awaken before the crack of dawn to begin preparing the morning meal, but no sooner have you finished that than you begin working on the noonday meal, and then no sooner have you cleaned up all that mess than you begin preparing the evening victual. And once that's done and all the boys is around a fire cloth and a nail, well then you've got to begin preparation besides cleaning up you got to prepare for the breakfast meal all over again. So my father, upon the second day, went to the point man and he says, you know, I don't think cook is what I want to be. It's too much work. And the point man said, well, Wales, he said, there is a tradition about that. He says, that all you need is for someone to complain about your cooking, and then that person becomes cook and you're free to your business. And my father said, I can do that. I could, I could do it. And he goes out to the woods and he gathers himself up a tremendous pile of rat pellets. Now, a rat pellet, of course, is what a rat does with his food when he has no further use of it, if you follow my drip. And he gathers the rat pellets up and he, sorry, and he gets uh, another wing from my grandfather. And he gets, the, he gets the rat pellets up and he goes back in the camp and he makes an exquisite deep dish glazed rat pellet pie, a sight to behold, but I had to not know what it is. And he sets the pie on the table to cool and he says, I think the people are complaining about this cooking right now. And he chuckles himself and goes about his business. Well, sure enough, ahead of the rest, early in the afternoon, up comes none other than the point man himself. 
an appointment walks into the camp and all the other boys are still out uh, uh, finishing the hunt and he looks at the table and he says, Ooh, a hog. And what appears to him to be maybe a, a mince or something is in actuality, of course, as you know, rat pellet hog, as featured at Maxwell's here at Gap. Now, the, uh, the, my, my father struggles to himself at that, that, that beast of complaining. The pointman goes over to the pie, takes one last look around, makes sure no one's about, draws his knife, cuts an enormous piece of his rat feather pie, scoops it into his plate, takes his spoon, takes a tremendous bite, and I'm saying his smoke billowed from his ears, his eyes popped out, he left up the table and said, My word! My father said, yes it is, man. And the appointment looked my father right in the eye and he said, good though. <laughs> so of course we're still cooking to this day. It's a tradition in the Wales family. Now, uh, uh, because I am unable to prepare an actual rat kind of pie, which I feel awful about, I have though arranged from the actual Wales family coffers uh, in the Wales family kitchen to bring uh, a few samples of the original rat pellets used in that rat pellet pie, which I shall pass to the audience, allowing them to have a second of each. And I would now say, God bless, good cheer, and a happy Christmas, one and all. Thank you. Malaysian Jew 